Well, hey everybody, Hudson Henry here. And I'm doing this three-part video series with my good friends at On One and x Rite about color management and about getting the color exactly like you want in your images, whether they're being displayed on screen, edited on screen, or printed. So I've already talked in lesson one about calibrating your monitor. The third video is gonna be about calibrating specific paper to your individual printer perfectly. This one is about getting your color right very, very easily by carrying this simple little lightweight tool out with you in the field. This is x rites Color Checker Passport Photo 2. Uh, it's the second version of the Passport Photo. And it's really nice because you open it this way, you get this nice target that you can use to create a custom profile for your particular camera to calibrate that camera for the scene that you're shooting, for the lighting situation that you're in. And I'll show you how to do that really easily with On One Photo Raw and x rites camera calibration, uh, color checker camera calibration software. Uh, and, and you can also, just in a situation where you think white balance, you wanna get it just right, after you shoot a scene, whether it's landscape, travel, whatever you happen to be doing, a nature scene, just a rock and roll show that you're shooting, just shoot this target in that light that you've been working and you can just really easily, easily get white balance nailed during post-production. I'll show you how that works too. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna set up a, a, a situation that we would use the color checker to do a calibration, build a LUT of a specific camera profile for my Nikon Z7 in a given lighting situation. I, I do a lot of still life shoots because I have this YouTube channel and I create a lot of the images that I put up as the representative of what that video is gonna be about. So for example, I'm, I'm reviewing Nikon's new little tiny Z50 mirrorless camera really quickly here. And so I've got this just set up on my table with my Nikon D850 and D500 just to show how tiny it is. And I'm gonna light it with the studio lighting that I've got along with this little uh, loom cube panel light turned all the way down close to just kind of get a nice look in there. And, and I wanna get you know some, some shots. I'm using my Nikon Z7 with my 51.8. And I'm gonna just really focus in on that little Z50 logo and have the other cameras kind of blurred out in the background. Take shots from a few different angles. You know, and I'm thinking about my framing being 16 by 9 and having some room for text, all that kind of stuff. But the key is, you know, I'm shooting it in this given light situation. All the images are going to be from this camera in this light. So all I need to do to get a perfect color profile for this shot to make sure it's absolutely accurate and dead simple. And this would be the same in a model shoot or in any lighting situation where you're shooting a subject under constant color light you know the light is not changing you can just throw your color checker opened up make sure nothing's obscuring any part of it in the same light and just take a shot you know fill in the frame as much as you can with it doesn't you can you don't have to have it perfectly full just shoot that color checker and, and now we're going to be able to take all those images along with the color checker image I'll put those into Photo Raw, we'll pull them up, and I'll show you how exactly how you can take that image of the color checker and build a custom LUT to apply to all the other images in the shoot and make sure everything's perfectly calibrated from that particular shoot. And I'll also jump in and I'll show you some cool stuff about how to use the other half of the Passport Photo Color Checker too to just nail white balance in a given scene. And I'll show you how I've used uh, this to even make sure that all the images is in a time-lapse sequence and Teton's National Park are absolutely perfect and color calibrated to the camera that I was shooting it with. It's, it's a lightweight, simple little tool. It's, it's smaller than my wallet, really, uh, that is great to have in your bag to just make sure that you can nail color whenever it's, whenever it's a little complicated or you just wanna be sure and you have a little time, you just throw this out. It's becoming second, uh, second nature to me now when I'm shooting something that's important to me, to just shoot the color checker at the same time. All right, so let's jump on the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I've gotten these files imported into Photo Raw 2020. I pull them up, you see all my images that'll work as cover images for my, for my YouTube video on the Z50 review that I'm working on. And you see my shot of the color checker in exactly the same lighting condition. So 
We're gonna focus on that guy. I'm gonna double click and bring that up big in my loop view. And I wanna jump in, I'm in the Browse app right now, which is you know just about sort of metadata and file organizing. And, and I'm gonna jump into Edit so that I can get a hold of my white balance tool. And, and I wanna go into the, uh, the Develop app, uh, or the Develop portion of Edit. And I wanna go ahead and grab my little white balance tool. And I'm gonna just click on this neutral gray square on the color checker and just make sure that we get this thing perfectly white balanced. All right, so there we go. We could, you know, you could, you could click on any one of these and it's really not gonna change that at all because they're all perfectly neutral. I usually use this one, but again, it isn't changing a thing. So now we've got that thing perfectly neutral. What I wanna go ahead and do is export this file and I wanna do it in a special way. On one and X-Rite have worked together I don't want to change the photo size, the sharpening, any of that kind of stuff. I want to export a TIFF from my drop down here. I'm going to choose TIFF. I want to save it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop here. I'll put it on my desktop. Doesn't matter whether you're using Mac or PC. I work on a, a, a Macs just as much as PCs. Uh, and then when it comes to the color space, I don't want Profoto RGB like I would for a uh, a master editing file. I want camera calibration space. That's where OM1 and X-Rite have worked together to create this kind of TIFF generating file space. Um, and I'll just go ahead and click export. And that's going to build a TIFF file. I can watch that little progress bar right here. I'm going to put it on my desktop and I'll show you what we do next to create a custom LUT for my Z7 in this particular particular situation shooting this series of images under this controlled lighting condition. All right, that's done. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to leave on one open, but I'm going to go down, I'm going to grab that file. There it is. And I want to go to X-Rite's Color Checker Camera Calibration Software. You can download that from X-Rite's website. Really easy to use software. And I'm just going to grab that TIFF that I created and drop it right here. Boom. It's going to load that image in. Takes it a second, it's a big file out of the Z6. And look at that, it's immediately gone ahead. I'll silence my, my notifications here. It's immediately gone ahead and just found that, those color checker squares. So all I have to do really is click create profile. Oops. And it's gonna ask me where I wanna put it. I actually have created a, a, a folder here on my desktop to drop it into X Write Profiles. I'm gonna put it in there. I have one from earlier, but I'm gonna call this one Nikon Z7 Z50 ATS. That's my YouTube channel approaching the scene. Uh, ATS shoot. There you go. And I'll hit save. It's creating that profile. And now the cool thing is, once that's generated, you can hear my computer chewing on that in the background a little bit. It's been successfully created. So now I'm gonna just go ahead here, I'm gonna open up my, uh, my OM1 software. And when it comes up here to Stanford, standard, <laughs> or sorry, camera profile, these, these are LUTs. I'm using the OM1 standard. These have put different sort of emulations of camera JPEG profiles or LUTs. I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. And I'm gonna to go to my desktop where we just put that and into the X-Rite profiles. I'm gonna choose that one. Boom. And now we have a perfectly color balanced profile applied to that image. Now all I have to do to apply it to all of the images is I'm gonna open up my my film strip here, I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use control A, it would be uh, command A on the Mac to select all of the images. And I wanna click back on this one that we just put the profile on. And I'll just say sync. And under sync, I wanna turn off all the settings in develop. I want to go into color and tone and camera profile. Boom. That's the only thing I'm synchronizing. Click apply and that will propagate through so that every one of these images gets that camera profile applied. Now it looks a little flat right off the bat here, 
but you can see if we go through and do some editing in ARM1, let's say I, I adjust the white, hold on, I'll have a look here, the whites and the blacks, get a bit more contrast in this scene, and we'll take a look at our levels while I'm doing that, and then bump up our shadows, and pull our midtones a bit like that, Pull back highlights a touch, bump up contrast just a smidge, crop this thing 16 by 9 as I intend, go up to 16 by 9, raise that up. There's a little room for text down below. And that's starting to look pretty good. Maybe if I go into local adjustments and grab a graduated filter and drop it in down here to darken up that area that was getting a little bit more of the light from that loom cube panel light, just kind of darken that whole thing just a smidge so that we're not feeling like it's a little bit. I could also tilt this just a smidge to get some of that up there and raise it up a little. Yeah, there we go, something like that. It's looking much, much sharper. Boom. But we know that the colors are all accurate, and every single image in here has accurate colors now. You know, it's, uh, it's definitely a really cool tool. And it's not only uh, for creating a custom LUT like this. I think that the color checker works so well. Well, I'll tell you what, it works for doing custom LUTs. It also works for just white balancing. You know, let's say you're out somewhere and you want to get just the perfect white balance on your scene. Well, just like what we did a second ago, I've just jumped into the edit module by pressing the D shortcut key. I've got this image from Grand Tetons and my good friend Rick LePage that runs workshops with me. We were out scouting for a, a workshop we'll be running there next fall in 2020. And if I, I shoot him holding up the color checker or I put it in the scene or I hold it up myself and, and, and trigger the camera remotely, all I have to do to get a perfect white balance is go ahead and click with that color checker. Look at that. His skin tones are perfect. And then I could just, like I did a second ago, synchronize that through every single shot in my scene. You want to know where else this is just awesome. It really, really works well. I'll jump back into browse here so we can look at that whole slate of images again. In situations like time lapse, I just have a few time lapse images laid in here from a 240 shot time lapse I did of the Grand Tetons while these cool clouds were blowing away. And I, I shot the color checker leaned up against a fence post that I was that I was set up just with the camera peeping over. Um, and I shot both the white balance so I could just do a quick white balance and I shot the whole color checker to be able to create a camera profile just for this time lapse. And it wound up creating just an awesome time lapse. As you can see here, I know that the colors are just exactly what I was seeing that day because the profile, I created a LUT, applied it to every single image, edited and synchronized all those images before creating a time lapse from them. So this is some really powerful stuff no matter what discipline of photography you practice. Even if you're a landscape travel person that's working and changing light all the time, the white balance tool and sometimes the color uh, LUT generating profile tool are both gonna be really handy when you're out in the field. But for those of you doing you know, portraits and studio lit scenes and still lifes, this thing's just invaluable for getting your color perfect every time. And so getting accurate color is really just as simple as that. You know, I mean, you're going to want your monitor calibrated to be editing, but shooting this target in the field, whether you're shooting to get the profile LUT by shooting the color checker in total, or whether you're just shooting that perfect white balance target, it is dead simple. It's ultra light, and it can make a huge difference in getting perfect color management just by having this little guy in your camera bag.